In today's video, I'm going to be trying to survive 100 days in modded hardcore Minecraft. Objective number one is to travel to the Betweenlands. Some say it's haunted by dark spirits. Our second objective is to obtain full Valonite weapons and armor. Our final objective is to defeat the dreadful Pete Mummy who lives beneath the ground. In conclusion, we have one life, three objectives, and 100 days to survive. Can we survive? Stay tuned to find out. On day one, we spawned on a floating island. While I was hunting chickens to get food, Forrest was getting gravel to make our tools. In the evening of day one, we saw something red, and when we looked at each other and looked back, it was gone. I wonder what that was. Hopefully it was friendly. In the afternoon of day two, we made a dirt bridge leading to the island, and by the evening, we made it across. We started off day three using our flint hatchets, removing a lot of the trees. We then cut our oak logs and oak planks, and then made the perimeter of our base. Now that the perimeter of our base was done, we crafted an oven. I rubbed two sticks together to make a fire, and we forgot that we made our base out of wood, so our base started burning down. I even ended up catching fire and taking some damage. And we burned down a tree. We brought the oven outside, lit the fire, put cobblestone, smelted it into stone, and then we put on fish to make cooked fish, and then we also cooked up some chicken. We went back to base and deposited some of our tools. We went back outside to cook the rest of our food, and we ran into a flame golem and a karate zombie. That is not something you see every day. We then cooked the rest of our steak. After cooking the steak, we went back to deposit some materials and realized our chest was gone. What happened here? And it seemed while we were cooking the rest of our steak, a mysterious red person snuck into our base and stole all of our supplies. Who can that be? And from day four to five, Forrest and I worked on finishing the rest of our base. As you guys can see, this thing actually came out pretty nice. On day six, we made a grinder and we put the bone in there and grinded it down into bone meal. This bone meal, of course, is gonna be used to help accelerate the growth of our plants. We placed some beetroots, we also placed some sugar cane, and Forrest placed some carrots. From days 7 to 10, we had a few things to work on. As you guys see, we made a farm, and then we carried animals to the farm. Forrest brought over a cow, and I even brought over a wild wolf that had 0.1 HP. We saved that thing's life, and we brought him a little buddy. I then brought over another cow, and then started working on building a dirt bridge all the way to the other island. After building a cross, we swan dove into the water, getting greeted by a hammerhead shark. Thankfully, we didn't die to this thing because one hit got us to half HP. That thing is insane. We explored the rest of the island and found a black hole with some crazy looking mutated spiders coming out of it, so we didn't want to mess with that. Once back home, we crafted up some sleeping sheets and we went to bed. Everything was normal when we woke up until we walked outside. We found a sign stating, I'm always watching. What could this even mean? Forrest then crafted kites for the both of us, and now that we have the kites, we are able to travel to different islands. I wonder what we're going to discover. What's up guys, Future Pain here, stay tuned to the rest of the video, you do not want to miss what happens. We gathered some dark oak logs, and then we found ourselves running into a ruins. And suddenly some dark druid spawned on top of us, and he actually threw me up in the air and almost sauced me off the map. That would have been a pretty bad way to end the episode. Anyways, we stuck around to fight some of these things, and it seems like every time you try to hit it, a lot of the time it just teleports away and you don't know where it goes. We also had to fight this bear off our shoulders, we don't want to die to this thing. These dark druids drop materials to get to the between lands, that's why we had to kill them. And on our way back home, we realized that our base was on fire. We immediately used our kites to get over to our base as fast as possible, only to realize that our base was in complete shambles. Our base has been burned down. And there was a sign stating, I warned you. I wonder if this was the same person that stole our chests earlier on. As you guys can see, this is a 360 view of our base. This thing got demolished. So we essentially spent the next four days completely demolishing our base, getting rid of all of the wood and replacing everything with stone supplies. That way, if that person ever comes back, he's no longer able to burn our house down. Anyways, this is the design that we came up with. We got a nice little area down here. Obviously, once again, all stone supplies throughout the building. And yeah, we're basically just going to finish off the roof by just placing stone slabs along the siding just to make it look a little more aesthetic. And in the evening of day 20, we set up two teepees and went to sleep. Anyways, for the next four days, we wanted to figure out how to make a buffalo ritual. And as you guys can see, we did. We had to make this fancy totem and then start playing a drum, which then will turn the cows into buffaloes. As you guys can see, we've got a couple baby buffaloes. 
We headed back to the runes and opened up the altar. We needed to put in the rest of the supplies that we got from the dark druids. As you guys can see, it is working. The swamp talisman is in the air and we have achieved it. This is what we are going to be using to enter the between lands. All you need is a sapling and a swamp talisman. And just like that, we spawn the between lands. And in the chat, it says you've made a big mistake. So it seems like that guy that stole our loot from the chest and griefed our base is behind this as well. It almost seems like he's trying to prevent us from getting to the between lands. He had some frozen skeletons and even some zombies. We weren't sure how much damage they did, so we had to be careful. And in the chat, it said you won't survive next time. Well, I guess it's safe to say whoever that person is definitely doesn't like us. Anyways, we went ahead, we found ourselves a lava pit, and we started making our nether portal. The reason why we were heading into the nether before the between lands is because the between lands is too strong. We needed to find blaze rods and nether warts. That way we'll have potions when entering the between lands. So essentially for days, we've just been using our kites gliding island to island. In the distance, we see some sort of creepy mansion. There looks like there's some sort of mobs there, and we weren't too sure whose house this was. We lined ourselves over the mansion and ejected ourselves off of the kite, landing perfectly on the mansion. Now we were a little concerned because there was a lot of pretty crazy mobs down here and we weren't exactly sure how much damage they're gonna do. Anyways, we jump right down and see a creeper. This knocks me to two and a half HP. I immediately get scared and run. After healing up with our food, we get jumped by a gang of spiders getting me to one and a half hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, if I die, the entire world deletes. As you can see, I am freaking out and I'm trying to build up, hitting the spiders away. If it hits me one more time, I will die. And just like that, we build up, getting away. Now we just eat our food and relax up here until our health regens. After coming down, I got jumped by another gang of spiders getting hit to 3 HP. We went ahead and blocked ourselves in and healed back up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. After eliminating the mobs from outside, we found a sign saying do not enter. So we of course entered. These things weren't too big of a threat. They were really slow. Anyways, look at this base. I open the first chest and find some diamond leggings and even a diamond helmet with some golden apples, blaze rods, you name it. They had some blaze rods and even a diamond sword. We went ahead and threw some of the diamond on real quick, just in case any more mobs came out. This base was really freaky though, it had a lot of random heads on top of fences. We looted the rest of the chest and it just seemed to be a bunch of random junk, just some glass and a few more golden apples. Anyways, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say this mansion is that one guy that griefed us, so how's it feel to get griefed back, buddy? We made it back to our nether portal just in time, as we essentially had no more food left. We arrive back home on day 34, and look at the buffaloes now. These things are like fully grown beasts. Anyways, we walked inside our base and heard a noise. It almost sounded like somebody had placed an anvil or two, and I know it wasn't forced because he was directly next to me. So we decided to search the perimeter. We started by looking at the back of the base to see if we could see anything, and we heard what sounded like someone repairing armor. I immediately called Forrest over to my location. It sounded like the noise was coming from underneath our base, so we dug down. We ended up finding a secret layer beneath our base, and there's the anvils that we heard. There seemed to be some gravestones with heads above them, with signs stating kill forest and kill painful. Somebody was out to get us. The first thing we did is we let the animals out of the cages, and then we found our chest that was stolen earlier on. It seems like we found this creepy person's lair, and he could be in the basement. As we walked down, we saw a sign saying trap animals, and as we turned, we noticed there was a jail cell full of animals with another sign saying do not feed. Whoever this person is, he needs to be stopped. Not only is he stealing our loot, burning our houses down, but he also has a vendetta against animals. We spent the entirety of day 35 hiding inside of his lair in hopes that he makes a return, but he never came. From day 36 to 38, we mined the rest of our diamond. We also made some potions such as strength and speed and a little bit of instant health as well. Next up, we enchanted our sword with sharpness too, and then we enchanted the rest of our armor. After making our potions on day 39, we headed into the between lands. We ate our golden apple before going in, just in case any mobs were there, and we went in. 
As you guys can see, this is a very dark and scary place. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Upon arriving in the Betweenlands, all of our potions turned into tainted potions. Not knowing what they do, I tried to drink one, but apparently it's literally just like drinking poisons. So our potions are pretty much absolutely useless in the Betweenlands. After returning back to base, grabbing some golden apples and some tools, we went to work. We were going to start making our shelter in the Betweenlands. We thought it would be cool to make some sort of tree house, so that's exactly what we did. We started digging and mining inside of the trees, and as you guys can see, it turned out pretty nice. We even made a tunnel that connects us to another tree, and we had a little chest room in here, and we even had a little basement. As you guys can see, it looks pretty sweet from the outside. From days 41 to 45, we went exploring in the Betweenlands, and after a little bit of time, we found some sort of creepy lair. And by the looks of it, there's like spikes coming out of the roof. What could this even be? As we were going up the stairs towards the base, there was countless amounts of heads sitting on top of fence poles. The sign above says do not enter, but we enter anyways. We saw two separate brewing areas and even two sets of armor sands. Could there be two people that live here? Anyways, we open up the chest and find an ancient greatsword and valinite boots. There was a couple other things like giant roots and balls of sap, and then we found an ancient battle axe. In the final chest, we found a valinite helmet. That is a pretty good chest. The last thing we saw was two secret layer signs. We stood next to both of them and clicked the lever and we fell all the way down. Luckily, we survived by clutching our falls with our water buckets. We took the next three days turning back to our treehouse shelter we made in the Betweenlands. We noticed that there was somebody there with TNT, and he looked at us and lit it and ran. Our entire base that we had just spent days working on has been completely demolished, and whoever exploded it vanished. He is no longer here. As you guys can see, our entire base has been completely destroyed. There is nothing left. From days 50 to 57, we hit the caves. We needed to find more Valonite ore. That way we could create full Valonite armor and weapons. As we continued searching the cave, Forrest found what looked to be some sort of massive toad sitting in the corner. We decided to take that down because we weren't sure if it dropped any valuable items. Turned out it's just a regular toad. Anyways, this boulder randomly started doing front flips and trying to kill us. Like, since when do boulders come to life? After a while of exploring the cave, we finally found our first pieces of Valonite ore. Let's go. We found a few more pieces of ore hiding in the darkness. From day 60 to 62, we created our armor and enchanted it all. For the next seven days, we went back to the Betweenlands looking for a spirit tree. We found some sort of testing chamber where there was a bunch of different areas with different types of animals caged up. There's cows and sheep caged up in there. There's another testing chamber here, and it looks like they're numbered. This is testing chamber 8197. How many testing chambers of animals does he have? We also found the entire trunk of a tree to be mined out completely, and it seemed to be another testing chamber. All of these mire snails come right out. Not too far away from the testing chambers, we found the spirit tree. This tree has faces on every single log around it, and it also spits at you. It launches spikes out of the ground at you. These spikes can also root you in place. As you see, I am currently unable to move until the root runs out. The crazy thing about this tree is it can launch spikes out of its mouth and out of the ground, so you gotta watch out for that. And after going back and forth with this tree for a little while, we finally have defeated the spirit tree. As you guys can see, we received a spirit tree sapling, which means we can plant that wherever we want. As you guys can see, we finally placed the spirit tree. Forrest is going to use the bone meal to grow the tree. And there you go, a tamed spirit tree. In seven days after traveling through the Betweenlands, we had finally found the Primordial Malevolence. I know you guys probably don't know what that is, but you're about to find out. Me and Forrest look at each other and we enter in very cautiously, not knowing what to expect. Don't worry, these swamp hags are not that big of a threat as we are in full Valonite armor. While Forrest kills the remaining of them, I go ahead and break the spawner. As you guys can see, there's an energy shield and the sign says only the sword keeper may pass this point. We weren't really too sure what would happen if we tried to run through, so Forrest went ahead and tried. As soon as he ran in the shield, he got launched off the entire map. And I tried to do it as well, but we got sent flying. To get the special sword, you have to mine all four of the corners, and then the sword will drop. Since Forrest had the really good pick, we let him mine it, because these took quite a long time to break with a regular diamond pick. And as you guys can see, the final one is going in, and a sword drops. 
It is time, ladies and gentlemen. We crush through the energy and an eyeball appears. Forrest stares at the eyeball and disappears. I was not going to let Forrest go down alone, so I stared at it and I got launched all the way to the rooftop along with Forrest. The only way to kill this boss is to catch one of the green energy orbs. As you can see, by throwing the energy orb at it, it stuns it, bringing it down, and it creates a hole inside of the barrier, allowing you to hit it. While I'm jumping up, hitting him through the barrier, Forrest throws another orb at him, immobilizing him, allowing us to do a ton of damage. And as you guys can see, an energy orb comes at me, and I throw it at the primordial malevolence, and we were able to take him down. We retrieved the Ring of Recruitment, which grants the power to recruit and control entities at the cost of XP. What the heck does that even mean? And after a three-day return to our base, we went outside to feed some of our animals. All of a sudden, it said in the chat, Feel my wrath, and started raining lightning strikes from above. The lightning turned a lot of our pigs into pigmen. We actually had to get our shockwave sword and eliminate some of these pigmen. And after three days of traveling through the Betweenlands, we had finally found a Tar Beast. He was hiding underneath the Soul Sand. As we were eating our Gapple, it hit us directly into a Black River. And it does a lot of damage, so what we did is we held our shield up. Blocking as many hits as we can until Forrest gets here and kills it from behind. As you can see, it's pulling me underground and I can't even see anything. It hits me once and does half of my health, but Forrest is able to take it down. From days 91 to 93, we were looking for this exact biome. This is where we can spawn in the dreadful peat mummy. And while we were fighting this white, we realized that there's some sort of mansion in the back. And as you can see, as we get closer, this thing is massive. This has got to be the creepy guy's main base. There's even a force field leading upstairs. How can we get through that? We found the most optimal place to fight the dreadful peat mummy, and there it is, coming out of the ground, the dreadful peat mummy. It has 550 health, and it actually picked Forrest up and started carrying him across the soul sand. Since it was soul sand, I was unable to get to him. It was way too slow, so I had to parkour using these blocks. The dreadful peat mummy kept carrying him away from me, and I had to fight off his pets as well. As you can see, it's pretty hard to catch up to Forrest when this dreadful peat mummy just keeps carrying him away from me. It made it a lot easier when we were in the water, that way I could swim. And after chasing this thing down the river, we have slain the dreadful peat mummy. I wonder if killing him opened up the force field at that mansion. There was only one way to find out, and as we walked up, the force field was no longer there. Forrest and I headed up the stairs, I wonder what could be there. There he is, the guy that stole our chest, the guy that burned down our base, that blew up our base in the Betweenlands. It was time to let out our frustration, it was time to get our revenge. Our strategy was going over great, we backed up and were both unleashing a lot of arrows into him. And as he charged at us, I used my shockwave sword to knock him back, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen. He was defeated. After killing him, we took his throne and placed his head on the throne. If you made it this far in the video, comment 100 days so I know you're a real fan. Leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you soon.